<laughs> I left that check in my other pocket. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, we've got a question for you, Sandy. We, we yeah. saw you guys tearing down that um, the 4680 pack, and yeah. the one with the potting material in it. Right, yeah. And, of course, the impression that everyone got from that was it's not serviceable. In our world, we, we have to find a way to service things like that in order to remain in business. So we did that type of thing with a number of uh, roadster parts. The DC to DC converter, for example, is, is a nightmare once you open it up because it's, it's about 40% potting material. And they put a bunch of components underneath the potting material. You've got MOSFETs, transformers, diodes, you know, things that fail. We're curious. Um, do you see any way possible that this thing could be repaired? You know, um, probably the battery pack won't need to be repaired. Um, you know, we have a thing about when we design products, do you want to make it serviceable or repairable? In a lot of cases, if I make it serviceable, um, it's going to fail. But if I make it so that it's um, so that it's reliable, then it won't fail. So, for instance, I know that in a lot of cases, the um, the connectors to the individual cells were falling apart on the original Roadster and the original S. Um, but with this technique that they've got, by putting the potting over everything, just sealing it up completely, mm -hmm. my guess is that the things that are going to fail are probably going to be the battery control module, which is accessible, and maybe some of the connectors that go to or from the battery. But if they've tested it, I think it's going to be pretty robust. I don't think it's going to be... And if you want to take it, if you want to take that pink stuff off, you have to, uh, you have to use uh, dry ice and, um, and an air compressor. Uh, and that's how you get it off. That's the big secret. Uh, that's how we got rid of all that stuff. We, uh, we used that. And if you needed to find out, you know, how cells had been disconnected and whatnot, you're probably going to disconnect more cells, but that'll do the trick. Um, do it outside. <laughs> don't, don't even think about, um, your neighbors are all going to hate you because they're going to be pink dust everywhere. But, uh, but that's how you get it off. So, um, Good luck. <laughs> well, well, yeah, thank you for the tip. You know, one of our repair methods with these multi-cell battery packs is a failure mode that's not uncommon as they age is you get one cell out of the pack that goes resistive. Well, yeah. now you have to throw the whole pack away unless you can repair it. Yeah. And right. um, the trick now becomes to isolate that one cell. Which one is it? And what we found is the cars typically don't notice one out of 7,000 cells going MIA. Right. And that's been our success with the Roadster, with the Model S, with the Model X at this point. Um, so we're anticipating something similar happening with this battery pack. We had thought about the possibility of uh, finding a solvent that would dissolve this. Don't, no, uh, I'll give you a, a tip there. Don't. We, we did that as well. And um, once you read the side of the can, uh, you just realize that you've, uh, you've spent, I think it was like three or $400. And uh, as a little teeny can, and it says, uh, you know, this is a carcinogenic. And <laughs> oh wow, yeah, <laughs> don't do oh that. wow, don't do that. You can't go wrong with the uh, the dry ice. So I mean, okay, you might blow off. It's a lot more robust. The tabs are a lot more robust than the little teeny wires that they used to have on the twenty one seventies. So you you probably won't break anything new. You might, but I doubt it. And then you can go and uh, do uh, like a continuity check over the. And actually, you should be able to break it down, right? So there's the four major, um, the four major modules, and you probably could uh, sort it down to maybe one module. Which which one of the modules has got that problem? Sure. And then you could uh, dry ice blast that one area find what you need to find and don't touch the rest. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Usually um, the software will isolate it to a particular brick inside that multi-cell battery pack. And once we know the general area, um, even though it's covered, we've even thought about possibly x-raying it and then isolating that cell. And if it is a bonding wire, uh, then we might be able to do a, a, a drill through that um, a ah. potting compound and disconnect you know, yeah. kind of like orthoscopic surgery, basically. Um, mm -hmm. 
Is Tesla giving you any clues as to whether they're doing repairs on this battery pack, or are they really just simply scrapping them if they find one bad cell in a large pack? Um, actually, I've talked to them about, um, you know, what their scrap rates are and stuff like that, and they're very mum about, obviously, they don't want to talk too much about that kind of stuff, but I, um, I did have the opportunity to go drinking with a few of them, and... Um, and it sounds like their scrap rate in house is very low, even at the cell level. Right. Um, but the uh, but the uh, the battery pack level, uh, not not much at all. And then they have that thing with um, um, I forgot is it R J or J R Strobel, the guy that's got Redwood. Oh, yeah, J B Strobel. Yeah. J B. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway, he's um. He's in the uh, battery reclamation world, and um, um, I'm actually going to go and see him. But the word that we got back was, "You can't get enough of bad, ba can't get enough bad batteries." Um, he uh, he's uh, starving to death. He everybody go out there and you know somehow kill your brick your car so he can he yeah. can stay in business. <laughs> or it's yes, and a lot of a lot of the a lot of the old stuff like uh, like in the olden days. There was a lot of problems, but uh, not so many problems now, and at least not with Tesla batteries. Now, sure. um, you may want to expand your scope because we have seen in tearing apart vehicles and whatnot, we have seen where there's uh, um, one of these, uh, like their modules, Tesla's modules are huge, right? They're the length of the car and um, and about, I don't know, a foot wide or something like that. Mm -hmm. But they are. When you start looking at the other guys, They've got they've got all these um, you know uh, one foot by eighteen inch uh, modules or maybe sometimes a little bigger and sometimes a little bit smaller, but these modules when they go, uh, you have to take the module out and throw it away and maybe you can put another one in. BMWs can be retuned. They uh, they'll balance themselves by taking out the old um, the old um, it's a like a circuit card and you plug it back into the new module and, and bingo, it works again. But um, uh, but repairing those things would be probably a little easier, uh, quite a bit easier than uh, than trying to replace or repair anything that, uh, that Tesla is putting out. And I can guarantee you the, uh, uh, the other car companies out there, uh, they will have failures and there's no question about it. So I think you guys are going to be billionaires in no time flat. <laughs> Thank so you're saying then that the uh, like the Model S with has 16 modules in its battery pack, and they're all, you know, 16 inches by about right. close to two feet, and the other right. battery makers are very much like that then. Yeah, except that they're using uh, plus uh, like the uh, pouch style batteries or yeah, pouch style mostly. Mm -hmm. Some of I don't think there's anybody left doing um, prismatic, but mm -hmm. but yeah, and when these things go, you lost. Uh, you know, inside it's only one pouch that went, but you lose the whole module. So uh, when that happens, rebalancing them doesn't really happen. And I'm guessing that uh, the Volkswagens and the um, and the uh, I don't know everybody else that's out there. I don't want to start throwing names out, but anyway, the the guys that are all using these uh, these pouch style batteries, um, they're going to have problems. And you have the ability to swap them out. Or even better, pull them out, take them apart, and uh, figure out when we're what went wrong. Right, um, you'll do just fine, yeah. because you lose the whole, you lose that whole module. Mm -hmm. If there's one cell that's bad, you do, you lost the whole module. Sure. So those of you watching, JB Strobel looks like he needs some more cells. Send him your toothbrushes, your tools. <laughs> <laughs> he recycles all of that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I spoke to him last year, and I said, if you ever get any Tessa Roadster modules, we're looking for those. And he promised me that if he sees any, that he would. So maybe he's not seeing them. We have a question for you, uh, Sandy, from Roger yeah. Starkey. And he says, can the structural pack penthouse be fully accessed from inside the car? Uh, yeah, but you pretty much have to take everything out of the car. Okay. All right. Let's take the rear seat out, the carpets. Um, there's a couple of harnesses that are in the way. And then you got to, 
I, I'd rather not. I wouldn't do it that way. I drop it out the bottom. Uh, that's the way it went in. Um, that's the easiest way to get to it. And of course, you know the the cover it is a nightmare to uh, to peel off. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we haven't really found. Um, uh, I have no idea how you take it off and put it back on. It's, it's sealed. Obviously, they don't. If it goes into the water, they don't want. Um, like if you dive off the end of a pier or something with your car, you really don't want the water intruding into the battery pack or the electronics. It'll it'll blow the fuses and whatnot, but uh, or the charges for the fuse. But uh, they really don't want that to happen. So it's kind of like a sealed sealed box. That is um, that is one of the most labor intensive parts of our process is the uh, removal of the top lid on a Model S battery pack. And there are two yeah. reasons for that. If you do something like Rich Rebuilds, which is start to peel it, drill a couple of uh, one inch holes and then put a tow rope on it and yank it off or pull it up, <laughs> which he's done, right? Yeah. Uh, but kind of, then he goes and makes a new top out of cardboard or something. Yeah. And yeah. He's, yeah. He's a crazy guy. <laughs> Actually, one of the funnest times I ever had on this show was was going to see Rich and um, and driving around on his um, chirp or whatever they called it. In, uh, and uh, he had a little rocket ship. Uh, um, I don't know what it was. Kind of like a mini, uh, like a go kart or something like that. So, yeah, yeah Rich is a Rich is a riot. But um, putting it back together again, mm. he, he's got to do it slightly different. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Well, what we have to do is body work after we take it off because we have to reuse that lid. And at some mm. point, Tesla said that they will look into selling us the lids, but it hasn't happened yet. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Drop a like or comment, and be sure to see us live.